If you love skiing or snowboarding, but you're sad to see the snow cover becoming less reliable than it used to be, then this video is gonna offer some practical insight into what you can do if you wanna help. And the good news is that it's actually pretty simple. There's one thing that you can do which has way more impact than anything else. We're gonna look into the carbon footprint of going on a ski trip, find out the breakdown, and uncover the low-hanging fruit for any of you who might be interested in skiing a little bit more sustainably. Now, skiing is quite a symbolic activity when it comes to climate change. The entire sport and industry depends on this magical white lubricant, which is inherently ephemeral and only exists at low temperatures. And skiing is a lot more than just a hobby. It's a major global industry that supports big chunks of local economies and generates billions in annual revenue. All around the world, there are hundreds of millions of ski visits occurring every single year. And snow sports can be a force for good, connecting people to natural environments, benefiting from fresh air and exercise, and helping people to find joy, happiness, relationships, and above all, to just have fun. The flip side, however, is that mountain regions are experiencing climate change much faster than the global average, and ski resorts all over the world are dealing with significantly decreasing snow reliability. So let's zoom into France, in this stunning place, Les Portes du Soleil. The ski area lies across both France and Switzerland and connects more than 10 resorts together. I've been spending the winters here since 2012, and even in that small period of time, I've witnessed the snow seasons getting shorter and the snow line getting noticeably higher up the mountain. Nearby, I remember skiing the Valley Blanche in Chamonix in 2015, which feels like the blink of an eye ago, and since then, the glacier has retreated more than 250 meters. Not only is this sad to see, it's a big economic kick in the teeth for the ski industry which depends on snow cover. A couple of years ago, a government agency did a ton of research into how climate change is affecting the French ski industry, as well as how skiing itself is impacting the climate. And the insights in this report are mega interesting. So a bit of background on the French mountain tourism sector. There's about 250 ski resorts with 120,000 jobs which rely on the opening of those resorts. And the sector generates about 95% of its revenue in the winter. So considering how economically important the ski industry is, it's kind of problematic that the snow seasons are getting shorter. Because of this, the guide goes on to advise that the sector must adapt. By diversifying beyond snow sports and developing four-season tourism with activities like mountain biking, events, and nature-based experiences. But alongside adapting, there's also a lot that we can do to mitigate. And the interesting part of the report is where they break down the carbon footprint of going on a ski trip. So let's check it out. So surprisingly, only about 3% comes from ski area operations, such as running the lifts, peace bashing, and snowmaking. Tourist accommodation, 4%. The food and drink industry, about 8%. Equipment, your skis, your boots, your clothing and whatnot, it's 16%. And collective infrastructure contributes 17%. And this is basically running a mountain town like waste management, snow clearing and running public buildings. And the biggest chunk is visitor transport at 52%. So that's more than triple the proportion of any other part of the pie. So the low hanging fruit that I mentioned at the beginning of the video is visitor transport. If you would like to make your next ski trip much more sustainable, avoiding flying and traveling by train, coach, or car share is the single biggest impact thing that you can do. The report calculated that the average carbon footprint of a one-person ski day in these French resorts is about 50 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalents. But that's the average of all the different visitor origins and behaviors. So this 50 kilo figure will vary massively from person to person. For example, if you travel from London to Teen by train and bus, then you could end up with a carbon footprint half the size of this average. But if you travel from London to Teen by plane then taxi, then you could easily end up doubling the average ski trip carbon footprint. That's the simple insight, the low hanging fruit. The single biggest impact thing you can do if you wanna ski more sustainably is to avoid flying to and from and to travel by train, bus or car share instead. But don't take this the wrong way. I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. And I'm aware that there's lots of people out there with completely different scenarios and these insights will be more relevant to some of you and less relevant to others. I'm just translating and summarizing some of the findings from this report because I found it really surprising that visitor transport contributes such a big proportion of skiing's carbon footprint, whereas running the lifts and peace bashing and snowmaking is actually relatively low. 
And sometimes taking a train or a coach is less convenient than flying and can even be more expensive. And that's why local initiatives like the Alpen Express Pass in Morzine have been set up to help out, where if you can show proof of train travel, then you can get discounts on your lift passes, gear rental and ski lessons, for example. There's about 55 million one-person ski days in France alone every single year. So if us skiers and snowboarders can take a chunk out of the carbon footprint of each of those ski days, then we're more likely to get future powder days like this. Thanks for watching that and do go ahead and share your thoughts in the comments, but just keep it civil. Different perspectives and opinions are welcome and it'd be great to see some healthy debate, but just don't be a dick if someone disagrees with you. Please and thanks. Bye.